Welcome to the Voices for Voices TV show and podcast. If you could do us a big favor, subscribe, like, share this episode and uh, others that we have. Uh, we're well over uh, 100 episodes. Uh, so we would really appreciate that. Our goal is to help 3 billion people over the course of my lifetime and beyond. And we can't do that without you, your help, your support. And we thank you for that. So our, our Voices for Voices TV show and podcast is the number one ranked TV show and podcast where people turn to for expert mental health, recovery, and career advancement intelligence. Our TV show and podcast is all about teaching you insanely actionable techniques to help you prosper, grow your self-worth, and your personal brand. So if you are a high achiever, or know someone who is and wants something more out of life, whether mentally, physically, or spiritually, please make sure you subscribe to our TV show and podcast right now. We very much appreciate that. So as you can see, our TV show and podcast publishes episodes that focus on case studies, real life examples, actionable tips, and in the trenches reports and interviews from subscribers just like you. So if that sounds like something that could help you or somebody you know grow personally or professionally, then help us out and join us by subscribing. We really appreciate it. We can't do this without you. Thank you in advance. So I think uh, as I was driving into the, the studio today, uh, pondering you know, the you know, topics of, of this episode, uh, that uh, when we think about life in general, right, as human beings, it, it starts out, uh, you know, obviously us as children, and as uh, we, we continue to, to grow, uh, things seem larger than life. We go to our first ball game or to our first concert, and the arena and the stadium just seem so larger than life that there's so much going on that uh, we're not able to grasp uh, as much uh, because right, we're we're, we're smaller, we're, we're we're shorter, and uh, so that makes uh, a, a lot of sense. And the speed of life too goes a little bit slower, I I, I would say. Uh, whereas we feel, uh, and just speaking from experience, that uh, there's always going to be a tomorrow. There's always going to be a next time. There's always going to be uh, a next day of class, a next day. Uh, where we'll get to go to a ball game or we'll be able to go and, and play catch with our, our, our parents uh, outside if that's something we like to do. Or go, uh, go to the movie theater, uh, go to a, a show. And things, again, just seem to go at a, a much slower rate and uh, we're, we're thinking again, there's, there's always going to be a tomorrow that, uh, you know, we're always going to be alive, that our family is always going to be alive, that things are going to remain uh, the, the same as we, we, we know it. Uh, and that, as, as we know, and as I've learned through, through years, being 42, took me a little bit longer, I think, to, to realize this, but uh, life isn't always going to continue in, in the way, in the manner that we, we, uh, we assumed in, in the past and that we would like. You know, we would like to believe that, again, that we're going to live forever, our parents are going to live forever, our siblings, our nephews, uh, our loved ones, uh, our children. Uh, and, and I think that's a hard thing to really grapple with um, as, as we, we, we grow, grow up. Uh, I can think back to uh, being a uh, freshman at Youngstown State University and the day that the 9-11 uh, attacks happened, uh, being in the dorm room and us kind of gathering around and, and thinking, oh my gosh, you know, what, what, what's going on? Uh, and trying to really just come to a realization of what, what, what's happening event-wise. Uh, and it was shortly after that time, and I don't know if it was driven by uh, the 9-11 the uh, in incidents that, that occurred, uh, but I found myself uh, really straddling two, two sides. One side was going out and partying all the time, uh, not worrying if I attended class. There's always, again, going to be tomorrow. 
you know, I'll just be able to take out a student loan or that my parents are going to be able to pay uh, and they're going to continue to pay even if I'm here five, six, seven years. Uh, and at some point that realization came to be like, okay, uh, you know, mom and dad aren't always going to be able to help kind of dig me out of a, out of, out of a hole and, and, and help out and help extend things. Uh, even though you know that's something that I, I would have liked, uh, and and so I had that that decision to make: to uh, continue on and have to do things 100% on my own, uh, without having a job, without having an internship, or having help with uh, you know continuing help uh, with and support with uh, from my parents. Um, and and so the the decision I made at, at some point was that I I needed to. Uh, really go to that, that opposite route. So stray from the partying all the time to I'm not going to be in college forever. Uh, I, I don't want to just be taking classes that uh, don't mean as much to me and that I'm not emotionally tied to. And so that switch uh, changed my major from accounting to marketing. Uh, and so I, I soon found that that content uh, of uh, that, that was in, in the, the marketing side of things versus accounting was much better suited for me. So I t uh, ended up attending more classes and being more engaged uh, in class and answering questions and really putting thought and energy in, into, uh, into the ho homework and, and the projects and, and, and assignments. Uh, and so at, at that time, you know, I was getting that, that support that I've always gotten from uh, my, my family. Uh, but that was kind of the first first spot where I, I really needed to, you know, make a decision and go one way or, or, or the other. Uh, and I was really in no, say, uh, mental uh, side of things of being able to be 100 percent on my own at that time. I I still um, I still needed that that support and and to know that uh, somebody else was going to be there to to help me if I were to fall along the way as uh, as that uh, that happened. So fast forward, right, we, we've seen episode 106 where I've talked about uh, you know, my, my mental health uh, history. Uh, so you can, you can check out episode 106 that I go into great detail, being interviewed by uh, one of our prior guests, Stacey Hayes, into, uh, again, uh, kind of the play-by-play the -play of my mental health uh, throughout the course of my life. Uh, and so this episode is different because we're talking about the realization, again, that things aren't always going to be the same. And when we get to that point, how do we react? And how do we, uh, how do we prepare for the inevitable that we all aren't going to be uh, alive for, forever? Of, you know, the, there's going to be loved ones that, uh, you know, as we grow, grow older, there's going to be loved ones that are in our lives that are going to pass away. Some are going to seem, uh, you know, sudden through accidents. Others may be prolonged with a uh, a disease that, 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 that causes uh, kind of that prolonged uh, suffering, if we want to think about it that way. And, and so that's where you know, this episode really com comes in, into play, is the realization for me, and us as you know, the Voices for Voices organization, uh, where we, again, we're just realizing that life isn't going to continue on, that people aren't going to live, live forever. And so I want to uh, you know, take us back to you know, last July, and so my uh, my father wasn't feeling well. Went to uh, went to the ER, uh, had some tests done. Come to find out that he had stage four cancer, and it was treatable, uh, but not uh, curable. So there's able to be some treatments that can go along the way, but uh, it won't prolong life uh, to to the fullest. It, it, there would still be kind of what they call a, you know, a, a terminal disease. So it's a, there's, there's less uh, uh, you know, medication or therapy or drug comes out to, to help but that particular cancer uh, that, that it's going to be terminal. So my dad's relatively young uh, at 73. I'm 42 and I, it's taken me again a, a little bit longer throughout life to kind of mature and, and, and to grow. Uh, and when I made the decision to uh, you know, enter the, the, the hospital to uh, have my mental health addressed, uh, since then, in 2017, I've, I've 
as you've seen, taken, a, a, I think, a much healthier route to, to life and, and the, the time and the energy that, uh, that I spend with the organization and the things that I do personally, uh, valuing family a, a lot more, and not only my, my wife, my daughter, my mom, my dad, my sister, my nephews, my brother-in-law, cousins, aunts, and uncles. And I'd like to think that it's better late than, than never. So less than a year ago, this diagnosis came uh, and for my dad. And the diagnosis was, you know, a year would be kind of what we'd be looking at from the amount of time that he'd still be, still be with us. So then we have to think, uh, again, we're not invincible. So how do we best support individual that is, is going through uh, going through a, 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 an illness of any sort, let alone a terminal illness. Uh, and so we spent lots of time in the hospital, at chemo, at palliative care, uh, at oncology uh, appointments, getting second opinions at, at other hospitals and institutions just to make sure that there wasn't anything that we, we would be, be missing. And so as this uh, the prognosis is, is going on, right? Life is continuing for, for me, for the organization. And that's where I, I, I want to give a big thank you to uh, all, the, all the people on the, uh, you know, the counseling, the psychiatry side that uh, is part of my team that is you know, helping me uh, prior to, to uh, the, this experience that we're, we're going through now. Uh, but then to this day where I'm able to reach out at a moment's notice and if I need to text uh, in, into the office and, and have a, uh, if I'm not able to have an in-office visit, I can do Zoom, I can do a telephone call, uh, can do uh, you know, FaceTime, uh, you know, what, what have you. Uh, and that has really helped me because I, I, I don't know where I would be at if I didn't have those options and, and that help. Uh, and and so this is, you know, us as an organization, you know, as we uh, try to be the, the biggest mental health advocates that we can and help as many people as we can, we can't do that without some help. And we shouldn't feel down uh, about reaching out to, uh, to, to get some help. Uh, yeah, just finishing up teaching three classes uh, at Walsh University. And as college students, just in general, right? They're going through a lot of stress. They're going through test anxiety, uh, presentation anxiety, relationships, being away from home, uh, all, all kinds of things. And having, having been there, uh, I, I knew that what I wanted to bring to the classroom was a little bit of that human side of, of things, of you know, it, it's okay to, to ask for help. Uh, it's okay uh, to, to do that, to, to not feel uh, you know, that the stigma that, that's, that's out there for, for, for some individuals, uh, but to be okay going, going forward, reaching out, using the resources that are available. That's what, that's what they're there for. Uh, and if we want to increase our longevity as individuals, that, uh, that we should think of not just you know, healthy eating and, and you know, all, all those types of things, but you know, our mind needs uh, nourished as, as well. Uh, so we, you know, talking to somebody, taking some time away from screens, you know, all the, like the some of the cliche things that we, we've heard you know, hundreds of times. Uh, but as a true testimony to that, uh, hopefully I am uh, somewhat of an, an inspiration to say, oh, okay, uh, that there's another individual, uh, and there's more than me, trust me, there's a lot of people out there that are stepping forward now accepting the help uh, because they're, they're finding that uh, it, it, it's helpful in, in, in one way or, or another. So fast forward to kind of current state. So we're within kind of that year window. Uh, so we're, we're filming this obviously ahead of when uh, you're going to be seeing it and, and hearing it and listening, et cetera. Um, so at the current time, uh, the uh, the disease, the cancer, has spread from where it started to the brain, and that started to negatively, uh, you know, f affect, uh, you know, memory and 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 and, and uh, you know, a little bit of the way we think of dementia, uh, not remembering some things, remembering others, uh, and so we started to to notice that, 
found out that, again, that the cancer had spread to the brain, uh, and there was, there was an option for radiation that could extend potentially to the life, right? Doctors, they, they know a lot, but nobody has that crystal ball, you know, except the, you know, the, the Lord above or whoever your higher power uh, is. And, and so when that happened, uh, my, my dad had uh, gone through a ton of treatment all the way up until that point, uh, other hospital visits associated with, uh, with, with the disease, uh, different infections. Uh, and, and so he made a decision, which I think we're all entitled to, to you know, decide to go with, forward with treatment or, or to not. And so he, he decided that at, at this point uh, that he, he didn't want, he didn't want this, uh, this additional treatment. Uh, because with that additional treatment uh, was uh, the potentials of other side effects of more memory loss and uh, the quality of life for a short amount of time uh, wouldn't be there, but the hope was that it would improve over time. Uh, and so that's kind of the information we were given, and, and so my dad made the decision that he, he, he's at peace with where, where he's at, and uh, you know, want, wanted to go home because we were in the hospital for this latest, you know, finding out the latest spread to the, to the brain. Uh, and so that's where he, he's at today. And we, we just got, uh, say, just got word. So he, he's entered hospice at home. Uh, and, 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 and with that, we were kind of given the, uh, the, the two minute warning of, you know, two weeks or less. And that was a week and a half ago. And uh, now it, things appear to be imminent. So what I talked about earlier in the episode about uh, as, as, as we're younger, you know, we, we, you know, we have no fear, call it, and you know, there's always going to be a tomorrow. When I wake up, you know, my mom, my dad, or, or my guardians, you know, they're, they're going to be there. Uh, and, and obviously, you know, as, as we grow up, things change. We, we move out. Some of us get married. Some of us don't. Some of us have long-term relationships, some don't, but by the very choices. But as that goes on, loved ones and individuals come and go. Uh, and I'm at now the, the realization that in a very short amount of time that, you know, somebody who I've looked up to from, you know, the, as much as I can remember, uh, you know, my dad, you know, the always uh, seemingly, in my eyes, of being invincible of, you know, there's nothing that my, my dad can do, always helping me as well as my mom, uh, anytime they can, however they can, whether it's financial or just moral support or support and uh, my mental health uh, recovery journey that, that I'm on. And, uh, and so that's tough. And so that affects mental health, right? So those are things of, well, there's going to come a time in a very short period of time from now where I'm not going to be able to go visit. I'm not going to be able to go see and spend time uh, with him. And uh, I think the biggest thing, again, from asking, aside from asking for, for help uh, and, and to have conversations with therapists and psychiatrists, if, if, if medication is the route you're on or uh, if not, uh, you know, have, those, have those talks and those, those discussions. And if I didn't have that at, at this point, uh, this is a huge hurdle. It's the closest person to me that will have passed on. Uh, you know, grandparents have passed on prior, uh, earlier, uh, when I was much younger. Uh, but a, a parent, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's hard. And, and so that's why I wanted to share this episode of kind of what, uh, what us as humans are, are going through. Uh, you know, you, you see and, and hear uh, a lot of the episodes and uh, a lot of you know, the, the, the great content that we have uh, that we're sharing, the event, uh, the, the individuals we're able to bring and speak to either in person or through Zoom, and you know, these mission trips we're, we're, we've gone on and we're gonna continue to go on. And, and so, well, again, those are, those are great things. Uh, us as humans, if we're not uh, you know, taking, taking care of us uh, as uh, individuals, uh, it's going to be hard to con continue those things. So I've had uh, a very hard, hard time uh, going, going through this, this situation of not knowing like, when, the, when the day is going to be, right? So I'm, I'm at the studio today, so I may get a call or may get a text after filming this episode that, you know, uh, I talk about imminency from, uh, you know, we have a week or week and a half potentially to 
you know, we have hours. And, and so I don't know how I'm going to react. I've never gone through a situation uh, like this. Uh, but again, from the, you know, the mental health side, that I can only just stress that that has been really a, a savior. Uh, because nobody really knows what we're going through except ourselves, right? You know, we, you know, not, we can't see the bruise or the, uh, or, uh, you know, if we have a, I don't know, like a, a, like a broken bone or and we're not able to see that and see that heal with a cast or have surgery. You know, these are things that we, we can't see. So unless we really, uh, you know, take a deep breath and, and make the decision that it might be best just to chat with somebody. You might chat with somebody one time and you might not have to go back. Uh, because I am on a, an active recovery, that's, that's my story, that's my experience. Uh, and, and so that's what I'm sharing. But your story is gonna be much different and it might take, a, again, a whole different path. Uh, so that's one thing that we get some feedback sometimes, like, oh my gosh, I don't wanna do this because I'm going to uh, you know, reach out for, for help uh, because I, I, I don't wanna I have to talk to somebody for the rest of my life or take medication. Well, guess what? That was me. Uh, that was me when I made that decision. Those are the thoughts that went through my head that I don't want to admit myself uh, to you know, uh, one of the psychiatric ward uh, wings uh, to the hospital because I was afraid. I was like, oh my gosh. Because up until that point, I, I was, uh, the party and had kind of kicked back in for me. Uh, and so I was, like, oh my gosh, if I if I'm on medication, I'm not gonna be able to party, I'm not gonna continue to be able to consume alcohol. And again, when I was faced with kind of, here's the direction you can go and get some help or not, uh, I am thankful and grateful that I was able to, to do that uh, because there have been many times uh, that in the past, right, I. You know, uh, right out of high school, uh, you know, took 32 cold and cough pills, overdosed, and, and so I, my life could have been ended at that point. And so for me to, you know, make it all the way to, to 42, I feel like if, if I'm going to, you know, continue on this journey, which I'm going to, uh, that I need all the help that I, I can have. Uh, we think of sports teams, right? There's, uh, think of a baseball, American baseball. So yeah, you know, the manager who manages, you know, the whole team as a whole, you have the pitching coach, you have the hitting coach, you have strength and conditioning, and you have, uh, you know, maybe a chiropractor uh, as well. And you have all these, uh, and then the medical facilities of surgeries need, need, need to take place and, and physical therapists. Uh, and, and so I like to draw that parallel of you know, individuals that are at, at the highest level on you know, team sports, and even if it's an individual sport like tennis, trust me, there's still a team behind the scenes that's helping that, uh, you know, that, that, that tennis player uh, continue, continue on. And part of that, there's the, uh, the, the mental side of things of, you know, a lot of sport is physical, right? So having the strength and the durability and, and the flexibility. Uh, but there's others that, okay, if it's, you know, if, if you're playing baseball, you're in the World Series, game seven, uh, you know, three balls, two strikes, two outs, and you're a bat, uh, yeah, you have that physical ability to, you know, hopefully put, put the ball in play and score that game, game winning in World Series uh, championship uh, winning uh, run. And, uh, but that mental side of it, okay, what? What do I think he, he's going to throw me? He's going to throw me a curveball. He's going to throw me a fastball. He's going to throw me a cutter, a knuckleball. And all those things, right, that's, that comes between the ears. Uh, and, and so whether, uh, again, we're uh, you know, a world-class world athlete, uh, an, an entertainer, uh, you know, like Taylor Swift, you know, out, out uh, doing her thing in front of, you know, stadiums full, 60, 80, 90, sometimes 100,000 uh person's crowd, uh, that there's still a mental side of things of not just remember the music, remember the dance moves, remember where I'm supposed to go, at, at which, which, uh, which song, uh, and, and remember the, you know, the lyrics, and, and if, uh, you're playing the, an instrument too. There's a lot of things that come into play that a lot of practice and preparation can go into, but at the end of the day, it's, it's really you and I as individuals, and the best thing we can do is prepare our minds the best way that we can. Uh, and I, I often get asked, how do I have the 
Justin, how do you have the energy to you know, do as much as you do uh, with, the, with the Voices for Voices organization? Uh, you know, I get asked, you know, do you drink coffee? You know, do you drink Red Bulls? And, uh, yeah, and, and that side of things, and I don't. I, I, I uh, obviously have, uh, for me, uh, alcohol wasn't a good spot in my life, so uh, you know, over seven years, you know, uh, staying kind of sober on, on that, and then other substances would kind of come and go with, with varying party scenes and, 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 and times like that. Uh, but as you know, as you know, I and I'm, I'm here today. I, I hope that uh, my hopefully energy and inspiration. I mean, it's just one little nugget that you you've uh, you or somebody you know has found through you know, our multitude of episodes. Uh, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're we're shooting for uh, have 200 total episodes uh, uh, between. Uh, here in in studio, what we call the big show. So you see the big show, Voices for Voices drop. That's the Voices for Voices TV show and podcast, where we have this beautiful setup. Uh, and and uh, uh, due to uh, the, the 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 great people, uh, you know, Hudson Community Television, uh, being able to to, to do that. Um, and then we have you know other episodes where you know, we might be doing some traveling, and so we might bring some episodes that way that. Uh, might not have the, the similar background that, that you see, uh, but we feel that you know from time to time it, it's helpful to uh, bring bring things uh, at, at, in different times, different angles, different perspectives. Uh, so no, I don't I don't drink coffee. I try to stay away from you know caffeine in, in general because uh, that kind of increases my my anxiety. Uh, and just really made that decision that I want to help others, and so. With my father, given his uh, prognosis, uh, I mean, he, he, he has meant, and he means the world to me, to my family. Uh, we're we're going to miss seeing him physically, but we know that you know, spiritually, you know, he'll be, he'll be in heaven, and we'll be able to talk, and he'll be able to see us, you know, do, do, uh, do some positive and, and great things. And, uh, it, and so that's that's what this episode is all about. Uh, we you know we cover kind of the kind of lifespan of how things seem you know big at first, and then as we grow, uh, and then we have to we're held more accountable, I guess, in in, in certain senses of you know being able to pay bills and and, and to like, and if we want to travel, that we have the money to be able to do so. And uh, aside from the relationship side side of things, and uh, hopefully. The mental health side is a side that you at least take a look at. Uh, again, we're not forcing anything. We just feel that it is helpful and as helpful as you can be to yourself is how helpful you'll be able to be to others. So thank you for joining us on this episode of the Voices for Voices TV show and podcast, The Big Show. I am your host, Justin Allen Hayes, founder and executive director of Voices for Voices. We can't do this without you, so we're open to any and all support. And until next time, please be a voice for you or somebody in need. Take care.